Radio. What's going on, everybody? We are back. This is episode 243 of the Dark Windows podcast. My name is Kevin. You know my name. Yep. And I've had a bad day, and I'm going to take it out on everybody with this. <laughs> <laughs> I've had a bad day yeah. as well. Just when you thought, like, oh, hey, great, a new episode. No, because it's war crimes on war crimes on war crimes. Uh, it's going to be fucking fun. Yeah. Well, mostly one war crime, but it was pretty bad. Yeah. Um, and then... It's a little aside. Found a badass bitch we're going to talk about in the middle of it, too. So. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I like badass, badass, badasses. Women uh, in particular. She, she, she is a bad bitch, and you can say it. It's fine. She would appreciate it. Okay. So. I mean, there's only, I mean, there's, uh, like. We've covered a handful. Right. And spoiler alert, because I couldn't choose. I had a hard time choosing between this one and another badass lady that I'm like, I got to cover both of them. So my next episode's going to be her. So, uh-huh. <laughs> oh no, I'll twist your arm on some badasses and, you know, World War II stuff. Oh, damn. Yeah, we're going to opposite sides of it. Okay. So, I All mean, right. same side, different front. Let's put it that way. Okay. 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 So the Philippines have had it pretty rough for quite some time. Obviously, they weren't always the Philippines. Um, that no. name, that name comes from King Philip II of Spain because the Spanish kind of sort of maybe colonized the archipelago in the 1500s. Um, and during their, uh, quote unquote ownership of the island, the Spanish found, uh, that, you know, occupying an island is kind of tough because there's people there and there's other people that want to be there because there's shit there that they want. So they had to fight off invasions from the Dutch during the 1700s in the western part of the territory. And this one blew my mind because I never would have suspected this. I'm assuming they would have had to have been of the pirate variety. But um, Muslim invaders in the south. Because Muslims are not all cave people and mountain people. Some of them were pirates back in the day, too. So I'm assuming this would have been Muslim pirates because uh, the Philippines are kind of out in the middle of goddamn nowhere. And there's not a lot of Muslims in China. Well, there are. They're in camps now. Um, but. What? 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 Chinese what? Muslims are being put in concentration camps. Yeah. Look up the Uyghurs. That's a real thing. It's kind of fucked up. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but back then there wasn't a lot huh. of, wasn't like a lot of Muslims in the area. Now there's a pretty large content, like a large Muslim population in the Philippines. Um, and them and the Christians do not get along, surprisingly. Um, the Philippines have had some, some shit going on for quite a while. Yeah. Um, and their president's a fucking maniac. <laughs> He's a crazy, crazy son of a bitch. If I catch you selling weed, I'm going to have you executed. Okay. First of all, I like the attitude when it comes to, to killing drug dealers. Weed's not a drug. Yeah. Somebody's selling heroin or, like, meth or something. Yeah, fucking A, you're right. Hang him up. That's fine. Weed doesn't count. It's a plant. Oh, I caught you selling roses on the side of the road, you piece of shit. You're going to prison. Nah, uh-huh. it's the same thing. Um, so, of course, it wouldn't be colonization without a couple of, you know, real good old-fashioned squashing of local uprisings. Um, there was a, quite a few of those. All of the fighting that locals had against the European invaders almost bankrupted the colony. Okay. The Spanish in the colony. I mean, obviously, these people didn't weren't too worried about money. There's one of these Spaniards out of their out of their shit. Yeah. Um, actually, put a pretty good dent in the coffers of Spain in general. And this was back when Spain was semi important. The 1700s, back when they were relevant. Um, True. So the amount of money that was being f- like pushed into the Philippines during this period of time was about 250 thousand pesos a year, um, and that was what was holding the country up. It doesn't sound like a lot of money, but back then it was probably a buttload of money. Uh, I will agree. Because I know the, the Filipino peso now because I was like, oh, man, my fucking 
my, my money autism kicked in. I'm like, I got to figure out how much the conversion rate is here. And uh, it only goes back to like 1955. But now you're looking at about 55, I think it was like 55.79 pesos per US dollar. Okay. So the money really is not worth a bunch. It's still a peso? Yes. Hmm. Yeah. Well, Mexico still uses pesos. Uh, you can still use pesos in parts of Spain as well. Because there's a Spanish peso. Kind of like in, Eng- okay. in in England, you can still use pounds and shit like that. It's not all it's not all euro. It's well, you know. I mean, yeah, because they're on, they're not on, uh, yeah. What? Uh, Brexit or whatever? They're not. They're not. No, uh, they're not part of the European Union anymore. Yeah. Which I mean, good for them. Good for them. Letting some dickhead in fucking Switzerland control your country. Fuck that noise. Now you have control, and you can let people get stabbed and have acid thrown on their feet in the, in the streets in their face on your own watch. You don't well, have to worry about some other asshole telling you this is illegal to do it. Well, no, now no, you no. can tell them it's illegal. Well, to do that it. was money wise, right? That, well, I'm, right, well, there was a I lot was... of there was a lot of policy made by the European Union that everybody else had to follow, too, or else they'd get kicked out, and that's why everybody was scared of it. Now, well, fuck them. And it turns out, hey, you guys are still fucking England. You're doing all right. You'll be fine. Okay, you know. So April 18, uh, 1898 rolls around, and um, Teddy Roosevelt, feeling a little froggy, he's like, you know what? He's fucking Spanish, getting a little too big for their britches, and I don't like it. So he takes some hard motherfuckers to Puerto Rico. They ride up a hill, beat the, the gazpacho out of a bunch of Spanish fellas there. And um, after the Spanish-American War was over... The U.S. acquired Puerto Rico, Guam, and the Philippines. Why did they acquire Guam and the Philippines? Because those were also controlled by the Spanish. Why did we want those? Who the fuck knows? Jumping off points to trade with Asia, maybe? I don't know. Well, we got Guam. Puerto Rico. And Philippines. Well, Puerto Rico came from the Spanish-American War. This all came from the Spanish-American War. Part of the agreement was we got some of their territories. Uh, so I mean, yeah, I'm still trying. I'm still trying to figure out what, what, why we had the other two. I mean, but. so we got the Philippines. We got stick fighting out of that, and that that shit is brutal. Like the the Filipino stick fighting shit that they do, they will wreck your legs with that shit. Yeah, that's rough. Um, and also they're kind of adorable because they're like, <laughs> the, <laughs> I don't know, Filipino people to me are just like they're magical because you're like. Are you Latino? Are you Asian? Are you a mix of the two? Why are you so good at boxing? Explain this to me. Why, Manny? Why are you so good at boxing? <laughs> but I don't know. And, and I, you know, one of my best friends growing up was Filipino, and he was fantastic. You know, um, and this lady that we're going to talk about later kind of looks like his grandma. <laughs> Some of the pictures I've seen. Um, so you know we've brought some much needed freedom to these three island nations as we do because that's what we do our main export as the united states is freedom violence war whatever freedom (laughs) one way or the other okay (laughs) so so the philippines become a u.s territory in december of 1898 by january of 1899 the first filipino republic is reformed is formed Uncle Sam is displeased with this. He wants his new toy just to be part of us. Just be one of us. Don't you don't need you don't need a separate government. Are you crazy? We're going to do the same with Hawaii. They're fine. Just join the club. It's all good. Um, And uh, the Filipinos said, nah, we ain't playing that game. And uh, the Filipino American war kicked off. And as as anybody that's ever sat through a history class or I guess existed at this point in time would know. The U.S. is good at war. We're very, very good at war. I mean, we Um, didn't always used to be. Back then, though, we were very good at war. True. Very good at war. We just, we just got better. Um, It's like age, like with wine. Yeah, we're you know better with age. We're a cheese. We're we're a good cheese. You know. Okay. 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 I'll go with that. It's rough at the beginning. Yeah. Let it get a little bit older. You cut the mold off it, and it's fucking fantastic. Uh. We're good at cheese. We're we're good at cheese. <laughs> We're good at cheese. Vermont Noah. is good at cheese. But Wisconsin I mean, can eat dicks. Vermont is good at cheese. Wisconsin gonna, is adequate at I'm cheese. I'm not going to say we're the best at cheese. Fuck you. 
Have some pride, you piece of shit. I mean, no. I, hey, listen. I I just said we're not the best at cheese. Name one state better at country, cheese than us. I was going to say country. No, no, no. Fuck countries. Name one state better at cheese than Vermont. No. I name can't. one. Name one state better at maple syrup than us. Please, bitch. Nobody. You don't. No. We don't. You know. Nobody fucks with us. Well, with, yeah. No. Name one country better at cheese than us. Uh, I don't know. I guess. France has got the some cheese. The cheese fucking smells. It's soft and runny. It's garbage. And Belgium fuck those guys. Has some pretty good cheese. And fuck the Belgians. Shut up. They killed a bunch of people in the Congo for cheese. They 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 suck at it. And putting fucking human hands in cheese. Yeah, it's how they. It's how I, I'm just saying. Fuck French cheese. You eat it though. If I have to. Like what? Name a French cheese that I would go out of my way to eat. I don't know. I'm not okay. quite sure. Name a French style of cheese that's not made here. Okay? Because we can make it all. We're good at that shit. We're really good at cheddar, though. That's kind of our... I don't know what cheese is made here besides cheddar. We're, we're uh... Okay. We're, we're big dick in the cheddar game. Like... I mean, that's... Nobody, a, nobody, that's... nobody out cheddars Vermont. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, beyond that, I don't really know much about... Like, I know there's, like... You know, like feta and stuff like that. That's eh. Italian. It's Middle Eastern, but whatever. Whatever. Greek. Yeah. You know, Greek, whatever. It's fucking... It's that area. No. Italian cheese is fucking mozzarella and Parmesan. Ah, mozzarella. Like, yeah, the stereotypical Italian cheese. Parmesan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The only the only other acceptable cheese from Europe would be the Swiss, but we made that, not them. So... Then there's, like, what, Gouda and... Yeah. And then there's... Uh, I, don't, I don't know. There's Brie and... Yeah. There's like a lot of other ones. And fucking blue cheese is not even cheese, it's fungus. And then there's one that's in in this one part I saw it on uh fuck uh the uh Guy Fieri Ranch or something. They're like some cheese that's How made in a dare you bring our dear leader into this conversation. <laughs> Whatever he's gonna say, I apologize. I'm not involved. <laughs> This yeah. is like this is like North Koreans talking about fucking uh, Rocket Boy there, like wow. like no 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 I'm disassociating with this. This is all on him. <laughs> no no You're no. Put anybody's family in a camp for the rest of their generations. No, it's no, his, no, not no, mine. No 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 it's it's no. This is uh, how did that just turn Flavor Town into a communist I, country? <laughs> I, I don't <laughs> I don't know. <sighs> but he has like uh, this guy brought that's that cooks that's, that's his friends of his. Most of them do. <laughs> yeah. Um, he, uh, he lived in France for a while, and then he lived in this one area, and there they make this cheese. I can't remember what the fucking name of the cheese is, but it was, like, like, right on the par, it looked like it could be a really good fucking cheddar. But when when you start ranking our, our cheeses by emotions, where you have, you know, we've got cheddar, then we have, you know, not even an emotion... More of a threat than anything. Sharp cheddar. <laughs> then we have seriously sharp cheddar. Well, that's still I'm, cheddar. It's just, it's grades of cheddar. And then if you get into the Cabot, like, black box stuff, that is, like, aggressively sharp cheddar. <laughs> and that shit's fantastic. And I mean, It's like $50 a block, too. Wisconsin does just does Wisconsin cheddar. Wisconsin can shut the fuck up. <laughs> they just do They cheddar. don't even own their hat, Kevin. That's fucking Michigan. Those pieces of shit can be invaded from two different directions. True. Like a bunch of losers. <laughs> True. <laughs> Who's going to invade us? The fucking French Canadians in Quebec? Yeah, good luck. They they wouldn't last good very luck. long. Good luck. The New Yorkers. as well. They'd get past Burlington, and then we'd be like, all right, bitch, that's enough. Yes, yeah, simmer down. <laughs> I don't know if they make it past. You walk past all those liberals, that's fine. <laughs> I don't... But now you're, now you're moving into, like... Red like red state Vermont, and I we think, will fucking kill you from the trees. I, don't know. I think there would be uh, they they there'd be quite the resistance up above. Not really. Uh, I'm talking about Burlington. Mm, it's a dangerous precedent set to set because if they bring drugs with them, like St. Albans, Barry, all that shit, they're like cool, fine, yeah, whatever. I'm talking like Northeast Kingdom area. Oh, you mean like the the fucking hippie commune? No, they're fucking they're woodchucks up there. Off as. <laughs> but they're woodchucks up there. I mean, they but fucking, they're not woodchuckier than us. They deer hunt. I mean, they're they're not no woodchuckier one, you know, than us. Uh, I don't know about that because you get into like Ferrisburg and it's a different language. <laughs> that's like that's like dudes walking into the jungles in Vietnam. Like, oh shit, they're speaking yeah, redneck. <laughs> once you once you get up to like the Northeast Kingdom, it changes. They're they're they're. Um, I'm just saying, it changes because there's nobody there. 
It's almost like you're running into Alabama. But like I said, <laughs> you get down into like central Vermont, and we are already pissed off about everything. True. And you guys speak a different language. True. And we were told that we speak fast. Yeah. I don't get it. But Talking to people in the South. It. Yeah, we do. We do. Well, you we do. know. But we're uh, also like. Anyway. <laughs> seriously sharp off topic. Um, <laughs> hey, you you brought it there. So back to the Filipino-American War, and I'm sure the Filipinos don't make cheese, but. Um, <laughs> they might. You never know. So due to the war, you know, the famine and disease and all that shit that comes with it. Somewhere. No way. Yeah. <laughs> Happens, right? I mean, and then, of course, you know, injuries and whatnot. Somewhere in the neighborhood of 250,000 to a million people died. Um, and then we did something completely different. No. Um, yeah, we boated up a bunch of Filipino citizens and shipped them back here, and we put them into summer camps? Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, I, that, that was because uh, we don't we don't set the ones up with the c word in them. They, that these was are, that was summer camps with a with you know, these, quotes. Yeah, summer <laughs> camp summer camp with a hard c at the beginning of it. Uh-huh. Uh, these are protective custody camps. <laughs> yes, we're putting you here for your own protection. Yes, uh, but by 1934, the Commonwealth of the Philippines had been created. Um, Filipinos were put in place to run their own country, and the relationship with the U.S. is getting better. Okay. First off, a run their own country. Yeah, yeah they they had they had a Filipino president. They had so we basically set their government up to mirror ours, and then we're just like elect people. You know, obviously we had some people that were like these are like the two or three you get to pick from for president. We, we suggest, yeah, <laughs> you take this highly one. recommend one of these three. Okay, we, <laughs> write one of their names down, put them in whatever the fuck you guys have over there. And we're going to pick out the one that we feel that should be it, and it's going to definitely We've not be those other two. <laughs> Listen, I know I'm, get, I'm getting super patriotic here, but never in the history of the United States have we ever, ever, never, ever, ever, never gotten involved in another country's political stuff. Uh-huh. We've never removed anybody. We've never oh. put anybody in place. It's all uh-huh. fake news put out there by the Russians and Chinese. Uh-huh. We're probably the only ones we haven't done it to. <laughs> realistically. Uh, no, Chinese, we did. When? Uh, around 1800s. We were doing that. So fucking everybody else was too there. Yeah, I'm just saying. You said we weren't doing the Chinese. We but did. we weren't putting people in charge of their government. We were yes, trying we to were. colonize it. Shut up. <laughs> God damn. Um, well, how the fuck do you think you do the colonizer? You probably go in and kill everybody, as we're about to talk about. All right, fine. Um, so things are getting better between the U.S. and the Philippines. They're, but they're are not, they? They're not great, but they're better. This fucking machete's coming. I know it. Oh, way to bury the fucking lead, because there's definitely a machete involved in the story somewhere. That's a secret weapon that we'll talk about later. <laughs> um, I didn't... Preface... Pre- 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 I don't know if there actually is a machete. There is. I'm and just you still saying. don't even know what the fuck we're talking about. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're 20 minutes into this, and you have no clue what's going on. You just keep fucking rambling on about stupid shit. So we're, we're going to jump forward. Me. We're going to jump forward uh, seven or eight years here, okay? Ooh. Um, December 7th, 1941, the Japanese made what our, our former <sighs> president would refer to as a huge mistake. <laughs> huge, huge. Very large mistake. Um, you guys don't know what you done did. But it's crazy because it's almost like they planned this whole thing out. Like they were going to start some shit. Uh-huh. But I think it was still spontaneous. Like they didn't uh, really do it on purpose. You know right, what I mean? Right, right, right. So less than 10 hours after they attacked Pearl Harbor, they maybe accidentally begin a full-blown invasion of the Philippines. Uh-huh. I think they thought it was California. They got lost. They're like, uh, fuck, yeah. maybe this is it. Oh, you the know. beaches, yes. Yeah, I mean, somebody turned wrong. Uh, uh-huh. this, this doesn't look like fucking San Jose or whatever the fuck <laughs> we're aiming for. Um, we missed Hawaii completely. I don't know what the fuck happened. Um, but when you look at it on the map, it looks way closer than it really is to get from Japan to the Philippines. It's, it's almost 2,000 miles by sea. There's really not a bunch between the two either. It's, it's a pretty good, pretty good haul. Um, yeah. But considering how quickly they did this, they had to have had ships in the area ready to respond to listen, the Philippines. They um, were, listen, 
First off, a it was just spontaneous. Okay. Yeah. First off, they're like, they, they oh, fell hey, in the Philippines look. in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, look, it's a fucking accident, oh, man. I don't know how I got damn. here. Damn. Don't uh, know how this happened. <laughs> but um, as soon as this happens, pretty much, um, in an act of selflessness and bravery, uh-huh. General Douglas MacArthur rounds up his staff, uh-huh. rounds up his family, uh-huh. and they retreat to Java. <laughs> and then they flee to Australia uh-huh. two days later. And he's like, stay here. Yeah. You guys got this, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go kick somebody's ass. What a dickhead. No. Yeah. yeah I'm going to go kick somebody's ass in fucking Australia, a country we're actively not at war with. That's no. actually going to help us. When we come back to the Philippines, I'm here to uh, establish uh, mm, friendships no. with the military. To no. make sure that we can bring the Australians back. No, MacArthur was the one that said, hold up, stay here. We're, I'm going to go get my ships, and we're going to blow these motherfuckers out of the water. Uh-huh. Be safe. Uh-huh. I'll be back. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Way to go. That's what he did. He was an asshole. <laughs> he still did it. Uh, do you know how long it took him to go back to the Philippines after he Listen, after he retreated? After he, he ran away like a bitch? He had to go to Japan first, okay? No, it was four fucking years before he went back to the Philippines. Listen, he still had to go to Japan first, okay? It For was, what? <laughs> I don't know, but he had to go there first. No. No. Because he did actually become the de facto leader of Japan. Whatever. Yeah. Fucking after the war. Yeah? Yeah. But you just said that he they bombed Pearl Harbor, and then he got his fucking... They bombed Pearl Harbor, and he ran away. Because <laughs> he had to go get his ships. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. You well, know, we're not going to bring any of these armed men with us. I'll just take my family and my staff, and... You guys are... You guys got it. There's a 20 on the table for pizza. No parties. Um, definitely, definitely, definitely don't go anywhere with the Japanese. I know it's going to be tempting. I know. Can um, you bring any girls over? They're gonna get oh, it. there's also girls involved in this. So, oh, God yeah. Damn. All right. Um, so, in between going from Java to Australia, they also landed on the island of... Uh, yep. Oh, nope. man. Corregidor? Oh. It's, it's a weird spelling, but the pronunciation doesn't make much sense with it. Because it almost looks like Corridor if you put a G in the middle of it. Okay. But the pronunciation's goofy. Um, but from here, like they would be back to Australia within a few days. Which is perfect timing. Because, as we've spoken about, there's about 76,000 American and Filipino troops um, that did not get the invite to the birthday party in Australia. Uh-huh. Uh, and they're about to have a very not good time. Uh-huh. Uh, the Japanese showed up with the overwhelming force, uh, as they do. And the troops did the only thing they could really do after fighting for as long as they could. And Surrender. They retreated from Shit. Corregidor to the lower part of the island which is the Bataan Peninsula. Ah. Uh, uh, yeah, shit's about to get really, really not fun. Uh. Um, after months of fighting, uh, a pretty almost like fucking vertical cliff uphill battle here, American, Filipino, American and Filipino troops made the unfortunate decision to, to, sur- uh, to surrender to the Japanese on April 9th of 1942. Um, spoiler alert. This is not going to work out well. And um, they would be rounded up and sent on what is now known as the Bataan Death March. Or, you know, the Trail of Tears for White People, as it would be. Mm. Um, These men were, you know, they basically were rounded all up. And uh, troops went up and down the lines, patting them down, turning out their pockets, taking all of their shit. Um personal effects, any equipment, weaponry, anything like that. Um, There was one man who unfortunately had a really nice wedding ring that one of the Japanese troops wanted. And uh, after he couldn't just pull it off, he kicked the guy in the balls, basically put him on the ground and chopped his hand off to take the ring. Um, He, he died. So, you know, to no one's shock, I guess. Um, So the Japanese troops were, uh, they weren't real nice. They beat the shit out of these guys. One officer had a handful of men, depending on, on, on what account you're reading, it was either all Filipino or it was an even number Filipino and American, but they were all officers, had them brought off to the side of the road, made everybody stand in formation, you know, do the whole about face thing and watch as they executed them with swords and bayonets. Um, not great. No. Um, anybody that was found to be in possession of anything 
like Japanese money, uh, even like Japanese ammunition that they may have found somewhere that they were going to keep as a souvenir, they were immediately executed where they stood. So the march started in Marvellas, which is at the very tip of Bataan, with Camp O'Donnell being the final destination 65 miles away. Mm -hmm. The beginning of the march wasn't terrible. I mean, some of the Japanese officers that spoke English would, you know, they would trade food with the guys. Um, They would even sometimes, you know, trade cigarettes with them, gave, let some of them have their personal effects back. But within about 24 hours, the honeymoon is fucking over here. Um, Allied troops have, again, had all of their stuff taken and uh, violence is back on the menu. (laughs) So one of the big things that a lot of these survivors mentioned was when the Japanese attacked you, it was never in the body. They would always hit you in the head, in the face, shit like that. Um, And a lot of the times that was because they noticed that you had fillings. And they would knock your fucking teeth out to get your gold fillings. Um, seem to remember another group of scumbags that did the same thing to another group of people that didn't really deserve it. Hmm. Right around the same period of time. Believe it or not, crazy how shit like that works. Huh, I'm trying to figure out who that was. Yeah, uh, mountains of shoes and all that, you know. Uh, okay, um, okay. So the Japanese took out a lot of frustration on the Allies. Uh, one Japanese general took somewhere in the neighborhood of 400 Filipino officers and soldiers. Um, He just kind of took them off into a rice paddy and had them all executed uh, different ways. They weren't wasting bullets, though. Oh, no. The Japanese are a very very efficient people. Uh Uh-huh. Ambitious, would you say? No, efficient. Oh, okay. We're not wasting ammunition. We've got swords and bayonets. Oh, that's true. And, uh, yeah, they, they executed somewhere in the neighborhood of 400 men. Just because they could. Uh, Um, This was the first big atrocity that would be committed by the Japanese. And a big part of why they did that is because they ended up with more prisoners than they expected to have. uh Um, And again, speaking to their efficiency, we need to cut this down. You know. Of course. They're they're still efficient. Yeah. I mean, just in a different assembly line, you know, like, you know, cut out the fat. You know, baseball players, watch them swing. There's not a lot of. Uh-huh. They don't put a lot of uh, extra effort into those swings. No. Shoei Otani's swing still fucking weirds me out because he's already moving when he swings. It's like it, it's like Ichiro, except he's got way more power. Um, I mean... He's also taller, but that's he okay. He is. Huh? He is. Yeah, I mean, fucking Ichiro was like 5'6", but Jesus Christ, could he steal bases. Oh my God, he was fast. Yeah. <sighs> he played baseball, what, for a long time. I don't remember he, how yeah, long. Yeah, he played for like 10 years in Japan before he can... Before he even came to the states, yeah, he's so fucking good. I think he's, he's so good. I think he's getting into the Hall of Fame or is in the Hall of Fame. He should be here. He should be. Yeah, but he's also managing a team in Japan. I don't remember which one it is, but hmm. that's not important. We're here to talk about bad Japanese people, um, not the good ones. Yes. Um. So this is where it starts to get really bad for the Allies because uh, they were given less than enough food to survive. And uh, that was evident by the number of them that starved to death during the march. Uh-huh. Um, we're talking a cup of rice every other day while you're marching through the Philippines in the summer, pretty much. Uh-huh. It's fucking hot. It's like a thousand percent humidity and there's no tree cover. No. You're fucking melting. Yeah. Um, Lester Tenney, who was one of the survivors, gave a speech at the National World War II Museum before he passed away. And said, uh, quote, number one, we had no food. Number two, you just kept walking the best you could. It wasn't a march. It was a trudge. Most of the men were sick. They had dysentery. They had malaria. They had gunshot wounds. A man would fall, and they would holler at him to get up. I saw a case where they didn't even holler at him. The man fell down, and the Japanese took a bayonet and put it in him. I mean, two seconds. He was on the ground for two seconds. Yeah. He could have tripped over a, a, tr- a tree stump or something and went down, and they just fucking... Like you, dogs. You are the them. weakest link. Yep. Goodbye. <laughs> and God forbid if you were taller than one of their officers. Holy shit. Or you had red hair. Yeah. Because, dude, oh my God. So the Japanese, not even just at Bataan, but as a rule, if you were taller than one of their officers, you were automatically a target. If you had red hair, they targeted you too because you looked that much different from them. 
Uh -huh. They didn't consider us people. Oh. We were enemy troops. We we may as well have been from a different fucking planet. We weren't humans, so we didn't get treated like that. Huh. Um, another big one that they like to do was something that uh, that the American troops would refer to as the sun treatment, where men were forced to stand out in the blazing sun with no helmet, no head cover, no shirt. Um, and this would basically broil any moisture out of you. Um, and, you know, heat strokes a fucking blast, too. We all know that. Heat strokes a lot of fun. Um, Sucks. And um, if anybody dared ask for water, they were shot where they stood. And uh, if they happened to fall in line, the men would be forced to march over their fallen comrade. So hmm. um, they'd also strip these guys naked and f and force them to sit within feet of fresh, cool water. Anybody made a break for it, they were bayoneted, shot, or beheaded by officers with any villagers that tried to sneak food or water to these guys, they were killed immediately with swords, bayonets. Um, a couple of occasions, entire villages were burned down to send a message that you don't help when we're coming through. Mm -hmm. um, supply trucks would just not even pay attention. They would run men down if they fell or if they were just in the way. Just run them over. Um, so when they arrived at one of the stopping points, U.S. medics tried to clean up and uh, and kind of help their guys out, but they really had no supplies because they had nothing. So they're trying to wrap fucking uh, lacerations and injuries like that with you know, leaves and whatever they can fashion into twine. So infection is running rampant through these guys. Um, right here is probably a really good time to mention something. If you were an American captured by the Japanese you had a 33% chance of being killed as a POW. Put that into perspective. Uh, if you were an ally, like English or American, captured by the Germans or vice versa, that percentage was anywhere between 2 and 3% that you were going to be killed as a POW. Um, and a lot of the... American and British POWs that were killed well in German custody. Mm -hmm. A lot of it was friendly fire because, you know, you'd have air, you know, you have the air airplanes coming through and they would just see a German column and like, Oh fuck these guys. And they would start shooting at them, not knowing that there was POWs in the vehicles as well, but way lower chance. That's a, a fucking one in three, one in fucking three chance that you are going to be killed as a POW of the Japanese, which is reason 4,591 that they got what they deserved at the end of the end of the war. Mm. And I still don't apologize for that. Fuck them. So when they reached the San Fernando railhead, they were forced into metal box cars. Also sounds familiar for this time frame. Um, but this was an hour, an hour trip to their next destination. 110 degrees outside, hundred men per car, no ventilation, no toilets. They're crammed in so tight that there's no room to sit down. If somebody passed out, they physically could not fall down because they were in there so tight. So a guy next to you could pass out and he would just fucking lean on you because he couldn't fall. Um, you had to go to the bathroom. You went where you stood. There was, they, they didn't care because again, weren't humans. So when they got to their, the, the next destination here, this little train station, they're offloaded from these cars and forced to walk another nine miles to Camp O'Donnell. Um, this place is no picnic here. Men are dying at a rate of several hundred per day uh -huh. from disease, illness, and, uh, Japanese, I guess would be a, a, a fair cause of death here too. And historians think that over the course of the 65 mile trek, 20,000 men died because by the Japanese count, 50, 54,000 men had made it to the camp. And they'd started off with about 80,000. So that's not a great ratio. No. Um, so here's going to be where we take our break. And we're going to come back. And we're going to talk about someone who's huh. about to give the Japanese a taste of their own medicine. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm sorry I'm, I'm, that I'm being quiet. But, you know, 
I'm actually trying to, because because you're making me think. <laughs> this is not a pleasant topic. <laughs> no, but you're actually making you. I don't know. For some reason, my brain went to like thinking about Vietnam. You know, because that was a fucking rough war. Yeah, it was. And I was thinking, I'm trying to say, I'm like, man, I wonder if Vietnam, the POW death rate was higher. And I actually I had to look it up um, while you're talking. Mm-hmm. And as far as um, uh, I can tell from what I have seen, the highest was World War II. Yep. And I mean, because the Vietnamese didn't really want to kill you. They wanted to torture you. They yeah. wanted to fuck you up. OK, because I mean, they're saying that like the that the Pacific theater. Yeah. Had the highest, which is 40 percent. Yeah. I mean, that's the highest it's you know, of any other one. And we haven't even gotten into the Japanese cannibals yet during World War Two. Yeah. So, I mean, because that was a real fucking thing. <laughs> uh, I, I just was like. So I figured it out. I at least kind of like, to like put no, I'm, I'm not. Yeah, I'm <laughs> yeah. like, I'm just kind of like, I don't want to have you know thinking like I'm not, I'm not paying attention, but I really am because I'm going. Where my brain's going, holy shit, what the? Really, is it that high? Because I'm, I'm stuck on that. Yeah, thinking about it because I, I just can't. I don't know. It's hard, hard to believe that there was that many people, that higher percentage. That you're gonna fucking have a chance to not make it, yeah, to see tomorrow, yeah. Versus, so like you know, it, but one theater to another. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So you could have survived, you know, World War Two in in the, you know, the, the European European theater. theater, and if you went over to the the Pacific theater, got caught again. There's a higher percentage you're going to fucking die. Are you fucking kidding? There were stories from uh, from World War II where uh, um, Italian POWs were being sent into, like, northern England to a camp there. On fucking weekends, they would take them into town to shop and go watch movies and shit. The Japanese weren't going to do that. Oh, fuck no. There's old grainy videos of them walking guys by, this uh, this uh, general, whatever the fuck he was, like, higher-ranking officer... As they're walking by, he's separating them. He's separating them into different lines. You went into this line, you were fine. You went into this line, you were being executed. Like, not put in a camp and work to death. Fucking killed on the side of the road and left there. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So people yeah. may think that what we did to end the end World War II was cruel. Not a fucking, not a drop in the bucket compared to what the Japanese did. I mean. Not even just to Americans. Like, look at what they did to the Chinese and the Koreans and all the little islands in between. Look what they did to their own fucking people. Like oh, unit yeah. 731. They were goddamn awful. And Which that's why 731. I, we're that's going to po- happen. We're going to have to cover it. That's going to happen. It's um, probably going to be like, end up being like a, probably a two parter. And uh, it's probably going to more. Yeah. And it's probably going to be a joint operation. Yeah, on that we're, one. I don't know about you, but I want, I want to get into gory details on that about uh, some of the, absolutely atrocious shit that they did yeah um but But, uh yeah let's take that break and we'll come back yeah so while all this is going on the japanese are still working and occupying the philippines because the philippines it doesn't look like it doesn't look big but it's actually like 17 it's like 1700 islands in the philippines i some remember the size of a postage stamp but you have to occupy all of them to make sure there's nobody there to put up resistance yeah in May of 1942, the Japanese launched their occupation efforts on uh, Tacloban City. They got in here, they barricade the city, and they start building up their defenses. And they uh, they build an air, a, a little airfield that they can kind of fortify and you know send planes from here out into the ocean to harass U.S. ships and then come back. Yeah. So we want to be close enough that we can go, you know go to and come from, or go from an aircraft carrier hit shit land here, refuel, go do the same thing on the way back home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, So some of the locals told some stories about what the Japanese did. Um, They would force them into scalding hot baths, take them out of that and go straight into ice cold baths, uh, which will fuck up your immune system and basically your nervous system. Yeah. Um, That's a shock. It puts you into shock. They were having surgery done on them with no anesthetics, even though they had no need for surgeries. It's the same thing that... 
Yosef Mengele was doing. It's the same thing that fucking dickhead at 731 was doing. Yeah. Um, they, and this one's really fucking odd. Like, this, this just seems like it's more mean-spirited than anything. They'd be forced to drink gallons of water, then be staked out on the ground, and Japanese soldiers would jump on their stomachs. Because you have that much water in your system, there's only two directions it can come out, and if it comes out with any force, it's going to hurt. And it also rupture your stomach, your intestines, shit like that. Yeah. It's fucking awful. Now, enter Nieves Fernandez, a school teacher in the city of uh, Tacloban, and she was concerned that these new occupiers, having seen what these people have done, she was a little worried that they were going to come after her students. Um... The thing was, when the Japanese came after school-age kids, it wasn't to recruit them. Um, the males would generally be removed. And uh, the females got a, a lot worse treatment than we'll talk about in a minute. Okay. Um, so, they also got a little weird here. Because if you owned a business, you lost that business unless you were doing something that the Japanese government approved. So say you were running uh, like a small, like a grocery store or something like that. They're uh-huh. not going to shut you down because they're going to take your supplies. And then you need to get more supplies. and They're going to keep taking them, stuff like that. They okay. also did the same yeah. with teachers where if you were willing to change your curriculum to be pro Japanese and like, oh, no, these guys are here to help us. They're getting rid of the Americans. You're fine. Um, others, if you disagreed to do that, then you were killed in some creative way that the Japanese would have come up with. And um, the big fear that most of the Filipino, especially women here, was uh, being turned into what the uh, the Japanese military referred to as comfort women. Um, Pretty self-explanatory, I think, there. They'd be put into camps and areas like that, and they were just used as rape victims, essentially, for the Japanese military. Um, I believe it was, I can't remember if it was during the defense of the Philippines or if it was one of the other islands where they had troops working in shifts during firefights. They would basically tag out so that they could go rape women and then they would come back to fight and tag the next guy to go. (sighs) Fucking disgusting. Yeah. Um, what the fuck? Yeah. Uh, most of these women, it, it, mm, they range in age from 9 to 60. Uh, somewhere in the range of 2,000 women in the Philippines alone were forced into sex slavery, uh, sex slavery for the Imperial Army. Fernandez has seen enough, and she decides it's time to do something. Keep in mind, this woman's a school teacher, okay? She's not a big woman. She's like... Four foot eight, maybe a hundred pounds. Uh-huh. She's a tiny little Filipino woman. You don't fuck with a little Filipino woman. So she gets into her finest all black clothing, goes barefoot into the jungle, hunting Japs. <laughs> wow. Okay. Okay. On her travels, she stops at a local farm and she's talking to the owner and um, he gives her a bolo knife, which is a curved machete. Yeah. Um, so in most machetes, like like what we think of when we think of a machete, is like a straight spine with a big curved blade on it. Yeah. You also have the kukri, which is technically a machete, which it curves forward. Yep. So the bolo kind of curves back a little bit, but it's still got a big, wide, thick blade on it. Yeah. But it's almost got like a, a hook at the top where it comes back to almost like a point. It doesn't really hook down. It kind of curves down a little bit. Yeah. That's a bolo. Um. So she then hits the nearest Fallout 4 build station and makes herself a kick-ass shotgun out of some old gas pipe that she found. So when I say shotgun, it's not... I'm not talking like your dad's duck hunting gun or a shotgun that you would buy for home defense or whatever. This is essentially a tube where you can put a shell in and then you have another tube that goes in the other hand you slide it onto that tube and you have a, ha- a handle up towards the front and you just slam that fucking back tube on and it slam fires the gun. So you have a, it, okay. it has a firing pin, but it's, it's manually yeah. operated by you. Yeah. Um, generally with stuff like this, you have about a 50, 50% chance that the next round you fire through it is the one that's going to blow your hands off. 
Yeah. Um, but uh, some other ones that they found after we'd retaken the island and we'd found... we So, spoiler alert, at some point in time, the U.S. military retakes the Philippines. They link up with this organization that she's about to create and they start training with them a little bit and they're checking out these weapons. Some of these were made out of fucking wooden table legs. Some of these shotguns are made out of wooden table legs with a metal slide at the back. It almost looks like a fucking trombone with the curve in it. You just fucking jack rounds into it. Huh. And they're single shot. So you have to put a, you have to put a, a shell in, put your tube back on and bam, just slam it forward. Interesting. Um, so she would spend the next two fucking years carrying out solo ambushes on Japanese troops marching through the jungles. Oh, damn. Um, before she started recruiting people, it's believed that she, by herself, may have killed somewhere in the neighborhood of four dozen Japanese troops with her machete and shotgun. Four dozen? <laughs> yeah, by herself. Damn. Okay. Um, and she's got a technique we're going to talk about here in a minute. Um, she would eventually have others join up, and she creates this cool little guerrilla unit of about 112, 120 people. She trained them all personally in the art of hand-to-hand combat, knife fighting, and gunsmithing. Uh Um, So to make another Fallout reference, she put all of her special points into combat. Uh Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. People will understand that. I know you won't because you're not a Fallout nerd. No, I know what you're talking about. You know what I'm talking about. Okay. Listen, same guy that watched you fucking play. Okay, (laughs) dickhead. So before we get into... Now, before I forget a detail, I I wanted to mention that where they're at, what's going on. She can't just run to fucking Dick's or Academy Sports or whatever your local sporting goods chain is. I just mentioned those two because they seem to be the biggest ones. And grab a box of shells. Yeah. She has to make all of these shotgun shells. And because buckshot doesn't grow on trees, we're essentially making blunderbusses. Because we're going to fill these things with rocks, gravel, broken glass, filed down nails. Um, and also, oh, the same things that we're using for projectiles out of the shotguns. Um, we're also going to use in our... <coughs> we're also going to use in our, our homemade hand grenades, too. Because uh-huh. uh, the Filipinos use all parts of the buffalo, as it were. Um, she even took her people... This is fucking crazy. While they're out doing stuff, they would tend to raid Japanese outposts and they would steal shit. One of their Uh favorite things to steal were artillery shells because she knew how to disassemble an artillery shell without blowing it up. Take all of the gunpowder out of it and distribute it evenly into hand grenades that they were making out of tin cans that they would fill with fucking rocks and shit like that as projectiles oh then you seal this can you light a fuse on it you throw that motherfucker out into the woods and wait for the japanese to scream they were basically the ira east coast yeah far east coast (laughs) yes (laughs) um oh boy so the thing here the other thing is they would occasionally get a hold of japanese weapons like their fire like their their bolt action rifles their submachine guns and stuff but they didn't like them because Japanese rifles during World War II were dog shit. They're even worse now because they don't have any. Uh-huh. Uh huh. But like the fucking the Arasakas, like if you want a boat or just go get a Mosin, it's a more reliable one. The Arasakas are garbage. Um, there I said it. I don't care what anybody thinks. <laughs> um, so she had this neat little trick that she also showed them when it came to knife fighting, and it's probably there's a picture of her showing this technique to an American troop that I will probably use for the episode. Um, So she says, and I quote, oh, I'm sorry. Hold on. Let me get back to that here. So the trick was to cut the windpipe and the interior carotid artery all in one shot. She says, quote, the trick is to stab sharply into the soft spot right below the earlobe, push the blade in about two inches, pull up and give the knife a 90 degree twist. This causes the blade to enter the base of the brain, causing instant unconsciousness. 
Somehow the twisting motion of the blade causes the victim to inhale sharply so they can't scream. Uh huh. If done right, the only sound that will be heard is that of the physical struggle, and this can be avoided almost completely by attacking from behind. This woman was a fucking teacher. She was teaching kids, like, math and shit. And now she's like, mm, no, I also know how to murder. So. <laughs> uh, I, uh, yeah. Hence why she was the baddest bitch on the planet at the time. Mm-hmm. Okay. So news of her reached American ears, and they were all pretty well impressed by this woman leading men into combat. Um, she was a huge inspiration to others. And of the 60,000-ish Filipino like resistance fighters across the islands, because of her, because of what she did, about 10% of them were women. Uh-huh. That's impressive. That's yeah. 6,000 women out there fighting. Um, but wow. the, women, the women had more of a... They had more reason to fight hard than the men did because they knew the implication if they were caught. So they were either going to kill you and run away or fight you to the death. Uh-huh. There, there was no win between. No. So because of their proficiency with these, uh, these neat little pipe guns, the Americans started referring to them as the gas pipe gang. Which is <laughs> fucking awesome. Uh... The Japanese, on the other hand, started calling her the silent killer because of her tactics of uh, attacking from behind, usually at dusk or dawn. Um, some of the people that witnessed her killing other Japanese troops uh, had uh, reported her, watching her come out of like coming down trees to jump on people and kill them. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking Filipino assassins creed. Um, <laughs> yeah. So are they... you, or was it a, you hear that? That was like the Eagles. Yeah. <laughs> and she lands in a fucking hay bale and just shanks a motherfucker in the ass. Oh, um, wait, don't want to do that. Roll. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> So the Japanese got so tired of her shit that they put a 10,000 peso bounty on her head, hoping that somebody in this already poor country would flip on her. She is the only Filipino resistance fighter during World War II to have a bounty put on their head. Oh, wow. And nobody ever collected it because nobody wanted to turn their back on her. Uh Uh-huh. Because obviously, A, she's a national hero, and B, if you turn your back, um, and I quote... That noise can be almost completely avoided by attacking from behind. It's her specialty. You don't turn your back. No. She'll fucking stab you in below the ear and rip your brain out. Lights out Feed London. it to the fucking dogs or whatever. Yeah. So during all of her encounters and fighting, she was wounded a total of one time where she took a glancing rifle shot to the forearm. Um, according to her, it didn't require stitches. They wrapped it in a bandage and she was fine. Uh-huh. So it just like fucking just skated across the top couple flesh layers. Of, wound. Yeah. You could have shot this woman in the chest and it would have been a flesh wound. <laughs> I wouldn't have given a fuck. She was like, tis but to scratch. Right. So some of the fun that her and her and her goons got up to included, but was not limited to conducting raids on Japanese supply lines, liberating POWs, sabotaging supplies, booby trapping tra- uh, trails and fields and raiding Japanese compounds. Uh-huh. They're out here doing goon shit in the dark, doing a good job of it. Yeah. So many of the women that were freed from Japanese captivity immediately joined the resistance because they wanted revenge. Understandably. Yeah. I get it. So the gas pipe gang did so much to fuck up and beat up the Japanese that when they got to the island, when they got to the island of Leyte, it was actually the first island during the war to be taken back from the Japanese. And Leyte is kind of like in the middle of the Philippines. It, you have to zoom in so many times on Google Maps to find it. But it's like right in the middle of, of this big cluster of islands. But it was the first island liberated during World War II. Hmm. Um, and it was because of them. And this was a crucial part to helping the Americans in the Pacific campaign. Um, because obviously after his heroic act of running away, Douglas MacArthur would come back and um, also take credit for a bunch of shit that other people that were actually on the ground did. Um, wow. if, if you asked him, he, he single-handedly fucking took Iwo Jima, you know. Um, fuck all those guys that died, though. Yeah, it was me. It was my orders that did it. Yeah, he's a piece of shit, too. Um, 
Just because your grandfather didn't like him. Uh, it wasn't just him. There was a lot of guys that didn't like him because, again, he took credit for everybody else's mm -hmm. shit. While they were over there fighting and dying on these yeah. little fucking islands, he was jacking off and smoking cigars on his boat. You know? Uh-huh. Uh, Nieves Fernandez left the military, which she was never really technically part of because she was a guerrilla fighter. Uh-huh. <laughs> but the military adopted her, basically, um, and let her retire with full benefits. In 1945, at the rank of sergeant, she never technically served in the Philippine military. <laughs> she Jesus. was just like she's out here doing shit, getting stuff done. Um, so she would spend the rest of her life in her hometown of Tacloban City, where after the war she went right back to her previous life of teaching. Um, you imagine that talking back to your teacher, and she's like, "Listen, if you guys can keep this shit up, I'm not going to teach you how to make hand grenades at recess." <laughs> hmm. Okay. <laughs> She passed away in the tail end of 1996 or early 1997 at the age of 90. Oh, wow. At the height of her doing this stuff, she was in her late 30s. She was like 37, 38 years old out here ganking Japanese troops. Um, she left behind her husband, sons, grandkids, and also a legacy of being potentially the baddest woman to ever walk the face of the earth, um, at least in the Pacific. Because, like, there was nobody badder than her over there. And, uh, yeah. It's all these women that claim to be badasses because they're making, like, 100k a year and they don't need no man. Fuck you. This woman was out here fighting for her country and killing motherfuckers with a shotgun that she made in her basement. She's <laughs> killing them wholesale. Yeah. Yeah. She's killing them hard way. Like, and she was the, she was the, don't turn your back on me, woman. Yeah. Because if you do, she'll cut your fucking head off and yeah. put it on a fence somewhere. Um, but Lady, that is, ladies, uh, ladies, this is what you do. Not like that. <laughs> no. Like this. <laughs> In, up, and then over. <laughs> so that was Nieves Fernandez and, unfortunately, the Baton Death March. All in one shot. Wow. Um, because there wasn't enough of her to do a whole episode on. If I wanted to focus just on her, unfortunately, it would have been Patreon. And then you would have had to go over to patreon.com forward slash darkwindows podcast and give us $5 to have heard it. Wow, that was but a good, since, uh, good segue. But since we love you guys, we're like, hey, let's give you tragedy, war crimes, and a badass all in one yep. for free. Yeah. The only thing we ask is that you listen to the ads because it helps us. And then tell other people about the show. Yeah, listen That's to all the we fucking want. ads. Please. It takes like it's like 60 seconds of the show. Just listen to the ads. <laughs> it's so helpful. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that was a good one. That was a good one. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good one. I, uh, if I quite, do say so, I do say so quite myself. Quite informative. Yeah. I, I never, like, I, you know, learn some shit. Oh. I always like learning some While shit. While you're talking. You keep talking. I'm uh, going to see if I can find a, that picture I was um, talking about. So, yeah. I'll let you uh, describe it. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, uh, since we're done, so go, like Kevin said, oh, no, Patreon. Oh, no, doesn't know how to do it. Also, go over to studio.com and check them out. They have uh, Bluetooth speakers, uh, Bluetooth speaker earbuds, headphones, find what you want, put it in your basket, go to checkout, put the promo code of darkwindows15 to get 15% off your entire purchase. Also, social media, you know where to find us. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Twitter and Instagram is darkwindowspod, Facebook, darkwindowspodcast. Okay. So this oh, is this on. is a picture of Nieves Fernandez and her husband. Okay. Such a sweet, happy, like happy, like adorable little Filipino couple. Yeah. They're fantastic. Yeah. Okay. Um <laughs> This is a picture of her teaching a USGI her technique. Oh. Oh yeah. <laughs> she got a fistful of that white boy's hair. <laughs> uh-huh. It's like, listen, you fucking laugh at me, and I will actually show you how this works. I'll show your boys how this works, too. They're going to have to watch, because uh, ain't none of them man enough to kill me. Yeah. Uh, huh. Yeah. Wow. I'm telling you, man. She she may be. Uh, we've, we've talked about a lot of badass sons of bitches here. Um, that's one of them. That's definitely one of them, because holy shit. Because, yeah, we had, uh, we had stagecoach Mary, who fist fought a pack of wolves while she was trying to deliver mail or whatever. Or the lady that was motorcycling and shit. This yeah. this one's different. <laughs> this one's different, but for sure, yeah. So that's it. Um, yeah. Again, we're gonna record Patreon next, and if you want to yes. hear that, uh, we're still running our Father's Day special where it's five dollars a month. 
to sign up. And um, <laughs> oh, and our Mother's Day special. Yeah, call it a holiday special. Five dollars a month. To yeah, join. Um, made it easy. There's no promo code. Just put your credit card information in. It's all good. You get billed once a month. You get four extra episodes. Comes out to like a dollar or something, something. An episode. I'm not good at math. Nah. If I was, I wouldn't be doing this. We're yeah. We're not. <coughs> yeah. We're not good. So anyway. Yeah. Anyway, so just because you can't see out in the dark doesn't mean the dark can't see into you. <gasps> bye bye. Fucking nil. <laughs>